some different opinions. You know, we're taught to believe the sun is 93 million miles away. It's a uniformitarian perspective. I don't believe it. I know a lot of you don't believe it as well, but some of you do. The, uh, the, whole, NASA, the whole NASA paradigm, the way, the, basically the way they, they've pretty much trained us, trained us to believe solar system and, and planets and the space is a physical place that we can visit, that we're not in a containment field, this is what NASA promotes. And a lot of people buy into that. I get it. Not even, I'm not even worried about those beliefs. But as a historian, there, there, are, there, are many, there are many accounts in the historical record that do not make sense if the NASA paradigm of a sun of being a star 93 million miles away is true. There are things that we cannot reconcile. I am not ready to dismiss the numerous accounts from the historical and traditional records concerning solar anomalies. I'm not willing to dismiss that. Herodotus of Halicarnassus in his famous book, still published today, originally in Greek, it's called The Histories. Herodotus was very accomplished and, the, and, and scholars are always finding these gems in Herodotus because the more Herodotus is understood, the more he is found to be dead accurate. One thing that I like about Herodotus is he said that, that uh, I am in no way obligated to believe what people tell me. I merely put it to pen. So, that's pretty impressive. Now, in Herodotus' account, he relates that the Egyptians did not trust the sun. The Egyptians didn't trust the sun because it had played false four times in their history four times four times the sun had deviated from its course four times perhaps this is why the ancient historians are always telling us that the Egyptians did not count years and they didn't there are no Egyptian pharaonic dynasties that recorded anything in years we don't we had to rely on Manatho a Greek Egyptian over 600 years after the last autonomous Egyptian government had collapsed. Yeah, after that it was it was a it was a province of the Persians, the Assyrians, of Babylon, the Macedonians, the Ptolemies, even for a while under the Seleucia, the Syri uh, Syrians. So Herodotus recorded 450 years BC. This is almost 25 centuries ago that the Egyptians did not trust the sun. The sun had deviated from its course four times in Egyptian recorded history. This is why they venerated the moon. The moon had not played false, false like the sun had. Now, Herodotus was not ignorant of the ancient Greek, the Achaean of Pelasgian traditions, traditions of Argos, of Phaethon, when Phaethon pulled the chariot of the sun, and the sun deviated from its course. So, I mentioned these events because there's a similar event recorded by Marcus Varro. Marcus Varro records that the sun had changed its course. King Merciless II of Hattie in the 13th century BC, the same century that Atlantis disappeared, also remarked that the sun had deviated from its course. For those who know your Bibles, you know that the story in the book of Isaiah, and I believe it's 2 Kings, concerning Hezekiah. King Hezekiah prayed to God because he thought a Syrian king Sinister Reb was gonna 
and slay him and take Jerusalem. And Sennacherib was on his way to go attack Pharaoh in, in Egypt when something unusual happened. The sun stopped moving in the sky. Then it retrogated 10 degrees before continuing to go across the sky. These are in the historical and in the traditional records and in the scripture that the sun had deviated its course. We have corresponding information from the other hemisphere, the Americas, that the sun, that the that the that the sun did not rise when it was supposed to. It was like 20 hours late. Let's process this for a minute. If we're going to believe a model that the sun is 93 million miles away, then we have to then we have to believe the model that we're on a globe. Because that's part of that model. If we're on a globe, then we have to interpret the sun stopping in the sky as a temporal pole shift. Something happened and stopped the earth from rotating. That's the only way the sun is going to move across the sky is if the earth itself stops moving and then starts moving in the other direction. This is the model we're told is the true model. That we're on a globe 24,000 miles in, in circumference, 7,926 miles in diameter. We are told that the sun is another orb 93 million miles away. Under this model, for the sun to, to stop moving across the sky or to change directions or to reverse and set where, where it, just, it had just arisen, under this model, it means our entire world had to have retrogated. Our entire world had would have had to have moved. And I'm going to have to call bullshit on that. Because under that model, we're dealing with centrifugal forces. We're dealing with inertia. We're dealing with ocean basins that are traveling at a thousand miles per hour. This is that model. This is the uniformitarian Newtonian universe model. So with all the, all the water in the world traveling at a thousand miles per hour, what do you think is going to happen when the world stops moving? Not only that, what do you think is going to happen when, when there's a reversal? What happens to all that inertia? If that model is true, how come the entire world, didn't, how come the entire Atlantic did not flood over? continents? How come the Pacific didn't flood over continents? Over 70% of Earth's land mass is oceans. None of these accounts about the sun, the sun changing its direction have anything to do with flooding. Floods are all attached to the Typhon, the Phoenix. This is something else. What I'm trying to draw to your attention is both models cannot be true. Either the sun is 93 million miles away like NASA tells us, which means we're on a globe, which means that the entire world would have been destroyed in earthquakes and flooding and tectonic displacement, upheavals, subsidence, all kinds of all kinds of 1,000 mile per hour wind storms. If the world stopped moving, and then, and then went in reverse to make the sun do that, our world would have been destroyed. Whole entire cities would have been swept up, swept up, up like dust in the wind. No, that model can't be true. You can't tell us the sun is 93 million miles away and that we're on a globe, and then also, and then also have us believe that these that these thousand mile per hour winds and thousand mile per hour tsunamis didn't didn't wreak havoc all over the world. But there's no record of this happening when the sun changed its course. So we have a problem. 
now we understand why the uniformitarians, now we understand why the anthropologists, and now we understand why the secular historians ignore the myth of faith on, why they ignore Emmanuel Velikovsky's research where these things actually happen, and he documents them, why they ignore Marcus Varro, while they, while they ignore Herodotus and Halicarnassus, while they ignore the Hittite writings of Merciless II. They have to ignore these things and not draw attention to them because it makes the model incorrect. The sun cannot retrograde 10 degrees and then the whole world not feel it and be destroyed. Coastal cities washed out, not be recorded all around the world by the survivors of how this flood just totally devastated everything because the times the sun deviated its course were all after the great flood. They were all after 2239 BC. The myth of Phaethon dates to the 15th, 16th, and 17th century BC. Merciless was 13th century BC. Hezekiah was, seven, was 721 BC. We have many, many of those records. 713 BC. The Assyrian eponyms. Now, Those are not the only incidents. On my channel, in my Phoenix Phenomenon playlist, I have isolated quite a few incidents of where the sun behaved abnormally, but it was only known locally. The phenomena was observed in the local, but in the hemispheric, it wasn't noticed. This is another reason why I'm a simulationist. I have documented incidents where American cities in the 1800s documented when the sky turned black. Black black and reddish clouds appeared in the sky. Strange lightning. And then the sun would move erratically. Sometimes it would totally disappear and they thought it was nighttime. People came outside with their lanterns and candles. They couldn't even see. And then 30, 40 minutes later it all disappeared. It wasn't an eclipse. It all disappeared. The skies cleared out. We're talking about thousands of people not only witnessed, but they experienced the exact same thing. It was highly localized phenomena, but, but American cities 30, 40, and 50 miles away didn't see anything. It's just like the, the traditions of the Bermuda Triangle. We have ships and, and aircraft they have documented the pilots, at the risk of losing their license, have documented things that they, they personally saw. But ships in the vicinity saw nothing. They didn't see anything like it. A case in point is 1917. 1917, the Fatima apparition. 70, 65 to 70,000 people witnessed the same thing. Over Portugal, the sun suddenly dove, went to the horizon, rose back up, and then plunged over the horizon, and it became nighttime over Portugal. Then the sun, a few minutes later, came back up and resumed its position in the sky. Only a highly localized phenomenon can account for this. If the sun had truly done that, it would not have, it would have never been the sun. It would have been, it would have been our world. Our 24,000 mile in circumference world would have moved erratically. That erratic movement would have created thousand mile per hour tsunamis and winds. There's no way that event actually happened. It was a perceived experience, not an actual experience. This is more evidence. 70,000 people cannot be wrong. Too many people witnessed the event. The event was reported in the scientific world, it was reported in the, in the religious world. The Vatican published the whole event. They're not all wrong, guys. That many people did not suffer a delusion. It didn't happen. A phenomena that was observed by tens of thousands of people happened, but it was highly localized, meaning the phenomenon was holographic. The sun cannot be 93 million miles away. 
Even the Phoenix phenomenon itself has shown much evidence uh, of arbitrariness. The ability of the sun to exhibit phenomena in a localized area, creating localized destructions, but not, but not, you know, there's no carryover to the rest of the hemisphere or the rest of the world. I'm not saying we're living on a flat earth, but the evidence is, is that we are a flat plane. The perimeters of that plane are still undecided. But the sun can't be 93 billion miles away. So whatever phenomena you blame the sun, whatever it is you're personally experiencing, if you get sick or they report solar flare activity, do you think it's possible that technology is being used and then solar flares are being blamed? I'm just saying. We need, we need to think about and process this. Because in archaics, I bring to the table the, the historical record. I don't need to recover all these issues. I've already covered many of these, uh, all of these issues in my videos. So what are we dealing with? If the sun is local, it can, and, it, and it's, that means it's probably the result of technology. If it's the result of technology, then it can create localized phenomena. It can create all the things that afflict the human family. It can do these things. These are just points to ponder. I'm not. I'm not doing a whole. I'm not doing a long video. These are just things that are on my mind. Uh, from a from a Telegram chat, I believe it was Telegram or Facebook, where a, where a lot of errants are all talking about the sun. And the only thing I want to add to the conversation is, hey man, I get it. Some of you believe in NASA. Some of you believe the sun's 93 million miles away. Some of you believe it's local. Well, whatever your beliefs is, I'm just asking you, don't dismiss the historical and traditional data. It's there. And in that data, there is no way. There is no way the sun is, is, is there's no way the sun can be 93 million miles away and the historical record be true. Somebody's lying. And me, I mean I'm already decided. I believe I believe that liar is NASA.